what are some uh, mistakes that you see new comedians making? Okay. Uh, the first one is my uh, partner, Barb always says, is this is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, so one big mistake is to put pressure on yourself. I've been doing this six months. I don't have my own HBO special yet or try six years. Because if you look at the average person that gets an HBO special, most of them have been doing it for 10 or more years. So be nice to yourself. Let yourself grow. Just like you have a child. Would you go up to your three-year-old and go, why aren't you working? Why don't you have a job? No. You'd go, all right, you made some progress. Um, and there's always a conflict when you interface with the business. Because business people are going by their business uh, truths. <clears throat> and they don't always relate to you. Um, um, there are a myriad of people that will lead you the wrong way and you might want to go with them because, oh my God, someone wants to represent me or someone wants to help me. It's okay. You'll still learn something, but always keep in mind that they don't know. They do not know. Unless they're a great comedian that wants to take you under their wing, they know. And they're hip to it and they'll, they'll do a good thing for you. Uh, David Arnold said something very similar. We just had him on recently, and he's one of those people who is, was successful on his own, even after club owners and other people would tell him, do it this way or do it that way. And he's like, well, this is me. And he yeah. kept at it, and he was successful in his comedic character because he stayed true to himself and didn't necessarily yeah. fold to the pressures of what people said he should do. Yeah, and that's very tricky because the truth is sometimes you'll get told stuff that you really should do. You know, like when somebody says, be nice to the club owner, go up to and introduce yourself. Of course you should do that, you know. When somebody says, don't run the light, <clears throat> don't run the light. How important is that reputation as a professional? Can you succeed by just being funny? You can, uh, but you have to be a certain kind of personality. Um, I remember Paul Rodriguez when he was coming up. He used to MC. Do you know who he is? Yes, very well. Okay. He used to MC at the comedy store and stuff, and everybody would not want to follow him because he would just go way over his time. He would just never stop. And he pissed a lot of people off, but he was so funny and so good. And and there were less comedians then. And there were less comedians back then, and so <laughs> But I'll tell you this, the average performer who doesn't follow the rules uh, is really hurting their development. You know, um, <clears throat> if you've got a pool of 10 performers that are vying for two or three spots on a given night or something, um, <clears throat> and two of them follow, uh, do what they're, you know, get off when they get the light. And one of them is famous for not listening. Guess who's going to get the opportunity? The two who follow the rules. So again, it's not black or white, but you never help yourself by breaking the rules. Just every once in a while, you may get away with it. Sure. I can tell you about a TV show that we did <clears throat> that was called Callback. Uh, it was when we first got to Los Angeles. It was actually, <clears throat> excuse me, the forerunner of Star Search. And uh, we had a joke that we wanted to do. And at the time, the talent coordinator for the TV show was actually Vinda Bona, who went on to produce uh, America's Funniest Videos. But at that time, he was uh, a talent coordinator. And it was his job to go over our material and tell us what we could do and what we couldn't do. So we didn't even tell him we were going to do this joke. And you got to keep in mind, this was back in the late 70s. And the joke was Barb would uh, pick up a guitar and it had a vacuum cleaner motor in it. And she would pretend she was playing guitar with me. And I 
And then I would turn it over and I'd look at the back of the guitar and I'd say, Barb, you cut a foot long hole in the back of the guitar. And she, with her innocent character, would look at me and go, oh, no, Steve, that's not a foot because you told me that's eight inches. <laughs> and that did not get stopped by the censors. And we won that show. The thing that bugs me the most when I'm coaching people is the way they say no to their own ideas. Um, there's about 10 ways that we stop our writing development when we have a thought. Uh, the first way is, no, that's not funny enough. There's almost no thought you can have that can't be funny enough if you look at it and say, well, how can I exaggerate this? How can I be more specific about what we're talking about? How can I change the location of this so that it becomes funny? Uh, another thing people will say, well, no, that's not real. That's not me. I wouldn't do that. That's one of the biggest stoppers for writing jokes that you will ever encounter that will bury your creativity more than anything else. Don't say no. In improv terms, say yes and. Yes and. Yeah. Uh, so important. 